All right, welcome back to XXL Radio Part 2 of the SM220 Station Monitor. You might have noticed in the previous video, if you watched it in the comments, uh, I still had issues with the intensity and focus controls. Virtually uh, non-functional. Uh, thank you so much to my subscribers who uh, commented and uh, I had a suggestion to uh, check resistor 175. So here we are on resistor 175. It goes directly to ground to uh, this point. Nothing. And yeah, this to absolutely dead set uh, verify. If I can get a clear shot here. Get this bloody thing to focus. I have pulled up uh, one end of resistor 175. If I can get this to focus. One end of resistor 175 pulled up and under test, open circuit, absolutely nothing. Uh, I did have a look at the uh, one next to it uh, as well, what was it, uh, 191 I think it was uh, from memory. Uh, yeah, anyway. Um, that one was fine, and I was able to... Uh, you can usually probe across so resistors and circuit as well. Everything else around here, around this part of the circuit, seems to be okay. But that one mega-ohm resistor, uh, that is resistor 175, has to go and be replaced. All right, the culprit is out. On my main component tester. Completely shot. All right, and here's our new part. Yeah, kind of nice one mega ohm resistor there. Well, with intolerance. And this is a two watt uh, resistor as well, so replacing the one watt resistor with a two watt because I suspect uh, quite a bit of uh, current is going through there. And I've uh, actually had. A few people write to me now saying that they've had the exact same issue, this exact same resistor has blown and taking away function functionality of the trace adjustment. So in the new part goes. Okay, our new 2 watt 1 mega ohm resistor has installed right there. Standing out like a sore thumb amongst the others. I was able to replace that oil-filled bypass capacitor with a nice poly cap, polyester cap. Thankfully, uh, Wagner and Wesley Electronics actually does have these uh, in stock. Probably could have used those in the high voltage uh, section as well. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, not very easy to find. I had to do a little bit of digging on the website uh, through various types to uh, find those, but I'm glad to know that we have these because we'll make it a bit easier to uh, come across and to, uh, and sorry, uh, to fix up similar situations. Anyway, I'm going to go straight into the power up. Here we go. Let's turn this other light down a bit. Volts on the Variac. Power on. Okay, there's power on the tube. I think I know what's going on. Yes. I was not able to adjust the intensity before. The all important trace. Is the trace adjustable? Ah, yes, it is. Well, there we go. Could not do that before, but we can now.
Yeah, it looks very nice. It looks like a real proper scope display again. Have to be extra careful now to not overheat this uh, display. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. All right, before I put this back together, one last uh, check as this heats up. Yeah, I was hoping to put my thermal camera onto uh, this resistor, but the battery's flat, unfortunately. So I'll have a look at the circuit diagram on this, or maybe someone can tell me in the comments uh, if you like. Uh, I'm just curious to know how much uh, voltage and, uh, and current goes uh, through here, but I'm guessing almost uh, definitely uh, a substantial supply. <clears throat> Excuse me for the uh, CRT is uh, going through there. So yeah, learning more about scopes. And I will now know how to fix this issue in any SM220 I come across. Good does this look? It's rotated or skewed. I think I think that's a I think the reflector is still intact. It's just it's just rotated. Compare this to the earlier video and this is amazing. And it actually looks even sharper again in real life than what you see here on the video. Because this camera just doesn't do it justice. This is so sharp now. I can't believe how sharp it is. If I do this, I just could not get that variation before. Man, that is so sharp. And full brightness control again now as well. I go any brighter than that to protect the tube. Yeah, it's amazing. these high settings. Not too close in. So yeah, keep it about there. Turn sure up and down. like a harp on if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I lined this up before. I spent ages lining these uh, potentiometers in the pen adapter, so I come at a nice fast scan rate about there. Things went sideways for those uh, bunch of years, and uh, and moved later. So uh, yeah, it was a uh, very expensive. Very strong signal here. Guys. Mate, um, Cooper's shoot. Is ten to fifteen over nine. Fantastic. If if I won the lottery, that's where I would move to. It's just spectacularly beautiful up there, and um, and, and and from here, uh, all I have to do is. Uh, yeah, let's find the crack portion of the band.
Alright, somebody there. Alright, we've got a higher up about there. This is VK3, United Sugar Alpha testing 1 2. Is this frequency in use? Is the frequency in use, please? VK3 USA. That looks so much better. VK3 USA testing 1 2 3. Oh, one. VK3 USA testing 1 2 3. Hello. Alright, more knobs to the right one last time. Somebody there testing in the background. Try to be nice to our neighbours. Okay, all knobs to the right test. Here we go. Let's see what this looks like. VK3 USA, is this frequency in use? Right, I'm only going to do that once. <laughs> You'll have to back it up and play that again if you want to because I do not like overdriving my gear. So there we go, lessons learnt uh, on the um, SM220 station monitor, common fail points, uh, oil fill capacitors, the uh, nylon shaft couplers and braking. And sadly, uh, buy beware still applies, but that's okay. I do have a shit list of people that I shall never deal with again. 73s from VK3 USA, VK2 XXL. Fixing what other people are too lazy or lack the basic electronic knowledge and yeah, there's only basic stuff to do themselves.